Now, the title of this is Fixing Every Team in Five Minutes. Mm. So let's start by acknowledging that the back-to-back defending Super Bowl champions are working from a position of power, and they're in a good spot. Yeah, this should be quite easy. Yeah. So the word fixing is really just, hey, what should they do going forward here? Um, two biggest decisions here for Kansas City. By the way, the cap, the cap increase. I was joking the other day that the cap increase that came out on Friday. Oh, oh every team helps. It helps every team because they, they have more money available. But the Chiefs also get helped, maybe more than anybody, because the the more the cap goes up, the more Patrick Mahomes looks like a, a steal. Um, and even though I think they've agreed to 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 do him a solid, right? They've they've agreed to like up his money as other quarterback money goes up, so that it doesn't look ridiculous, so that he's not being paid like QB twelve right. in a couple of years. But either way. The cap going way up, I think, helps Kansas City. They already have all this flexibility with, with Mahomes. Their big decision this offseason, Chris Jones, Legereus Need, two of the best free agents on the market. Where do they start? Is are, what, what are they doing with those two guys? Yeah, um, I mean, I think they would like to bring both of them back, but the first order of business is you've got one franchise tag and two players hitting the market. If you don't get a deal done before then, which guy are you putting the tag on? I don't think they can tag Chris Jones at this point. You don't think they can? Just with all the, you know, he missed the first game last year. He's trying to hold out. I just, it feels like the relationship, unless he's just like, hey, man, we're winning Super Bowls. I don't care. The relationship feels like it's beyond <clears throat> let's play the tag game. It would it's cost. It's either lock him up or let him walk. I mean, I think that, I don't know if it's the relationship thing. I think it's more the, the money. Like the franchise tag for Jones, given. <laughs> what happened a year ago is around $32 million. So you're yeah. making Chris Jones for one year. Would that making the second, would that making the, the highest paid non-quarterback in the NFL? Must, right? Has to be. Up. Isn't Donald's getting up there? His, Close, yeah. but yeah. Has to be. Right. So yeah, I would, I don't know. Is Jones anything beyond a three-year deal for you at this point? I think he's still got plenty left in the tank for about three years. And my my question in in the the teams that always have the high paid quarterback, you have room for three or four other say fifteen to twenty million dollar players. This is my question every single year: Who are those guys? Because in the, early in the Mahomes era, one of those guys was Frank Clark, and it was like, all right, we need to move on from this contract. We're not getting that out of him. At the moment, one of those guys is Jawan Taylor at right tackle. Right. I didn't love that last year at this time. Again. The Chiefs are similar to, I mean, they're, we're talking dynasty, right? They're similar to the dynasty Patriots where you can make mistakes and still get away with it. I think the Chiefs got away with a mistake well, you can make on mistakes. Juwan Taylor yeah. last year. You can make mistakes and still get away with them, but the higher the dollar figure attached to the mistake, the bigger a problem it is. So, I mean, they last offseason, they effectively voluntarily chose to flip both their tackles for something different, right? They yeah. let... Orlando Brown walk instead of giving him money. And by the way, he was looking for less money than Juwan Taylor ended up getting. So they let Orlando Brown walk. Now, Brown didn't have a good season for Cincinnati. So you can look at that in one way and say that made sense. Bringing in Juwan Taylor as the solution went very badly. Yeah. Uh, he was a penalty machine. He wasn't, I mean, he's, he's always been a bad run blocker. And he wasn't a particularly good pass blocker either. Once, I don't know if, it was as a product of penalties becoming a thing and officials getting in his head and suddenly now he can't cheat the snap and he's got to, like, everything went to hell. Yeah. So that was bad. And then Donovan Smith being brought in as a sort of last minute. Because remember, the other thing is, when they first signed uh, Juwan Taylor, they were giving all this talk about he's going to play left tackle now. He's going to move to the other side of the line where he's never played, play left tackle, uh, we'll figure out something at right tackle, and then... Close to the season, they bring in Donovan Smith. Smith's going to play left tackle. Juwan Taylor will stay where he he always plays at right tackle. Neither one of those guys was good. So they have at least, they have one big contract, Juwan Taylor, on that side of the line. And the other side of the line is kind of a liability as well. Either way, they're paying a reasonable amount of money now for two pretty bad tackles. Yeah. That's not good. Now, it's, it's obviously not insurmountable. They just won the Super Bowl. But... It's a problem. Hold on. For who? They're paying for Juwan Taylor, but not Donovan Smith's a free agent again. Right. They got him for nothing. But they have one spot where they're paying yeah. big money, and the other spot doesn't exist yet. Yeah. And then when we're anticipating the future, Creed Humphrey is going to have to get paid soon. Joe Tooney at guard is already making a lot of money. He's got a couple, couple years left on his contract. But I do think the Chiefs have learned 
you know, look, they, they reset after that Super Bowl loss and said, never again on the offensive line. We're going to invest properly there through the draft and through um, paying, right? Paying for the right guys. And they've done that. So left, they have to figure out left tackle again. They've, it's interesting that they've treated left tackle as like, we'll, we'll trade for Orlando Brown. We'll tag him for a year. We'll bring in a Donovan Smith on the cheap for one year. They've kind of used left tackle the way right tackle has been historically for teams. Like, you just kind of, you know, stitch it together. So I'm curious if this year in the draft, I know everybody's talking about receiver for the Chiefs, if they want to get younger at tackle. I know they drafted Wanye Morris in the third round. I'm just not a huge fan of Wanye. It's like one thing we may have overlooked was the struggles that the Chiefs had offensively at the end of the season, including against the Raiders was when Wanye Morris was out there, the rookie left tackle. I don't know if he's the guy that they're expecting to take over, but that tackle's a place that they have to figure out. And then going back to like who the two price, high-priced guys are, are you good with the future of the Chiefs era here being Chris Jones and LeJarrius Sneed? Can you tag well, Sneed for a year, lock up Jones for three years, and then tag Sneed? Ex- yeah, so it and has they're to, two of your high-priced guys. The problem forward. is it has to go the other way around, right? You have to put the franchise tag on LeJarrius Sneed. That gives you... A, it gives you time, right? You, you buy time. You've got him locked up for a year. You'll work on a long-term deal and or let him play it out and leave next year uh, and get the comp pick. But that then means that you are probably exposing Chris Jones to the open market because at this point when he's, he's fought so hard to get paid, why would he then sign a deal with you 48 hours before, you know, the – before he's actually exposed to other offers. So you put the franchise tag on Snead. I think that's right. Now you've got to desperately try and get that deal done with Chris Jones, and it's not in his interest to do it for you before somebody else can give him an offer. So now you're battling against the marketplace for a deal on Chris Jones, where, and he is so important to everything that defense has been doing. I can't imagine there isn't another team that's willing to pay him what you weren't willing to pay him a year ago. So... That's a struggle. I, th- I think you try and get him done uh, with a deal because he's so important to that defense, but it's getting costly. <sighs> Third most valuable interior defensive lineman in 2021, number one in 2022, second last year in 2023. Chris Jones, obviously dominant player. Um, put, he'll be 30, 30 years old by the start of next year. He's, I, I think he's at that point where you feel pretty good about the next three or four years with Jones, right? Yeah. Um, I want are the Chiefs at this point too where you'll get some kind of hometown discounts you'll get the we want to win a championship discount that all the great teams seem to have I mean maybe if you hadn't messed them around last year with money but yeah. given that you did I again I just because it's so close to the start of the, the league year in the open marketplace I feel it, why would he sign the deal I mean yeah it, the winning the championships thing also feels like it has more draw when you've only got like if you haven't had one yet or if you've only got one ring it goes it goes both ways right because sometimes people use the championships to go get go get their money right, right? chris jones goes to the panthers and but he's like, like i don't care i'm gonna make 35 million a year they're gonna give it to me i'll do, yeah i'll go anywhere it doesn't but that, matter it feels like that's more of a selling point for somebody that is yet to get to the super bowl you yeah. know is chasing a ring or has you know has never won one or has only won one and wants extra validation for somebody that's already got multiple rings is it that much of a selling point hey come win some more i mean sure but i also want the 100 million dollars so the other the other underrated aspect of this andy reed's about to get paid and re-up his contract he's coming back they have spags for whatever reason spags is not getting um, head coach consideration and beca- in part because when he was a head coach of the rams it did not go well could also be because he just has no interest he might not have interest i don't know but he but the the chiefs have they're in this great spot where think about what's happening to every shanahan coaching staff or related they're getting plucked left and right the chiefs are not necessarily getting plucked they have some of their foundational pieces in place and my normal team building strategy of you know get your receivers get your playmakers obviously the Chiefs have decided have decided that you know to move on from Tyree Kill and then by the way we're going to win two championships after that I assume they're going to continue down that path of not having to go crazy at receiver and tight end but you do have to you do want to future proof this roster without a Travis Kelsey so I think that's the other place if the Chiefs hadn't won the title this year, you know they would have come into the offseason absolutely saying, okay, receiver, 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 right. we've got to do it. Are they still going to do that, right? Or are they like, man, we can win 
with anything. We won with defense, and then the offense was very good on the playoff run. We could just be good when we need to be. No, I no think matter they, who's there. I mean, I think they still should be acutely aware that receiver is a problem for them, but I think it's a very reasonably easily solved one. Like, the other way that this team is, is quite like the dynastic Patriots group teams is – the more you look at it, the more you're like, yeah, there's a lot of holes here. <laughs> like, it's just that they, they're – because they're so good at the most important ones, it doesn't matter. Like, you look at this team, you're like, they have real problems at offensive tackle. They have only Rasheed Rice in terms of useful contributing receivers. Um, and they're losing two of their most important defensive players unless they re-up them both for big money. These are major problems for a franchise, and yet they can probably ride through – Maybe all of them. Like, the only one that's new in relative to last season is the defensive players thing. Like, yeah. the receivers were still bad last year. They won a Super Bowl. The offensive tackles were not good last year, and they won a Super Bowl. So, I, I, and I think in our order of business, we tag Legereus Need. We desperately try and get a deal done with Chris Jones before the, thing, the, the open market. If we have to bid against other people, fine. We still try and bring him back and hope the bidding doesn't go insane and we have to walk away. Because that presents a problem. And then you turn to who's our starting left tackle. And then receiver, I feel like, is the easiest one. We just draft one. Yeah. Like pick number 31, perfect spot for a wide receiver in this draft. 32, they're Super Bowl champs. 32, sorry. And no one lost their first rounder this Correct. year. So. 32. Sorry um, to correct you on air. No, you're, you're fine. You're right. You're right. Uh, Troy it's, Franklin. It's important Troy, to, to give correct information, not yeah, misinformation. Is, it is, that is true. Um, Troy Franklin, man. Yes. Oregon receiver Troy Franklin. I love Troy Franklin. Yes. He is so good, and he would be perfect for them. That's the play. I think they're in an interesting spot because I, I think uh, at at tackle, I don't know if they want to go in next year with Juanier Morris, but both tackle and receiver, we've said this for a bunch of teams. There, there's a lot of teams deba debating between a tackle and a receiver. There are talented tackles available late first, early second as well. Um, Jordan Morgan from Arizona, Patrick Paul from Houston. I mean, there are – potential options there for tackle, either position tackle for them is going to be a really interesting decision this offseason obviously they're going to continue with um juan taylor or right tackle they paid him the money they're, they're stuck with him even if they wanted to get rid of him uh but left tackle is a total it's open for business like anybody can have that spot now yeah. do they since that that super bowl against tampa bay they've made this real push to invest heavily in the offensive line on the other hand, Donovan Smith was their starting left tackle last year. You know, sort of last, last minute, hey, what about him? So what do they try and do? Like, do they draft a guy in the first round? Do they try and free up, you know, big money and get whatever the, the sort of biggest name on the market? Like, do they go, do they give Tyron Smith, like, one last go around and say, hey, you know, let's give Tyron Smith $15, 20000000 million a year for two years to try and lock this spot down? Or... Do they go bargain basement shopping again and bring in a reclamation project like Mackay Becton? Could Mackay Becton be left tackle for the Chiefs for a year? I mean, if the other four sp spots are solid, and I think Juwan Taylor probably has a better season than he did this year. But By the way, the smartest was answer to all of that is Josh Jones with everybody. Josh Jones with everybody, Josh for Jones sure. for like $6 million yeah. a year to start at left tackle and be better than the guy they've had for the last year? The Chiefs also I mentioned before, but Creed Humphrey, <laughs> last year of his deal. Trey Smith, last year of his deal. In the part of the Chiefs overhaul was not just, hey, we invested in Joe Tooney, we're paying for these guys. We also hit on a second rounder in Creed and a sixth rounder in Trey Smith. Yeah. So those guys have to get paid. Mm -hmm. So there's a chance if they do pay both of those guys, we're talking over 10 million, 10 to 15 million for four out of five starters already. So they might have to stay cheap at left tackle for this year, anticipating the future. Or at least um, plan it so that next year is cheap. Like yeah, yeah, this for year, sure. I mean, they, could, they could spend this year. They could do a year if they yeah. – yes. It's, just, it's a case of, like, you know, plotting out when the money is going to hit for various spots. But like Tyron Smith this year, you could – even if it was a two-year deal, you could structure that deal so that the big money hits this year, next year it frees up and it's cheaper, and, you know, you can spend that money on Trey Smith and Creed Humphrey or whatever. The one so other spot it. – to look at um, where on paper they're losing depth. Chris Jones, as we mentioned, there's, you know, you could lose him. Derek Nottie, mm -hmm. Mike Dana, a couple other defensive linemen need defensive line depth like other teams. So just something else to keep an eye on. They've invested two first rounders at edge over the last couple of years, George Karloftis, FAU, and DK Zama. But still probably more to do there on the D line. Do the bargain basement 
edge defender thing. Certainly, yes, and certainly interior. And interior, that mostly they, interior yeah. that they that they need help. Whether with. or not Chris Jones leaves, Tavondre Sweat for all the teams that might need a two down run run stopper. A four hundred pound monster. All right, do we fix the Chiefs? Yeah, good thing. It was more more involved than we thought when you talk about the Super Bowl champions.